So it's really sad. It's so sad that this this illegal immigrant, because she is not a citizen, she has fake citizenship, this woman, this career criminal was able to influence our elections and hurt Trump's support back in September. And now she's being paraded in front of Hillary. Oh, introducing Hillary that, that our presidential nominee would ask Alicia Machado to introduce her. Miss Universe, after Trump bought the pageant, I was such a gift, an honor to represent my country, Venezuela. Trump was overwhelming. I was scared of him. He made fun of me, and I was massive. He even called me names. He said to me, Miss Piggy, Miss Housekeeping, Miss Sitting Machine. Con sus bromas de Miss Piggy o Miss Housekeeping, se burlaba de mí, me decía que yo era la Miss Gorda, la Miss Fea. He just, he just judges us on our looks. He thinks he can do whatever he wants and get away with it. Well, now I'm standing here on behalf of women and Latinos across the country. <laughs> Americans who have been horrified with his dangerous ideas and vision of America. And together we are going to say loudly and clearly, no Trump is not getting away with it. He that is. Hillary has been fighting for women, children, and Latinas, just average people like me and you, her entire life. And to all the Latinos, this is our election. This is our election, Latinos. Y nuestro voto, y nuestro voto es nuestra fuerza, es nuestro poder. Así que vamos todos, vamos todos temprano a votar. Let's work our heart out so we can finally say, Madam President, Señora Presidenta, on November 8th. Now is my really honor and my pleasure to introduce the next It'd be like Trump asking Mike Tyson to introduce him at one of his rallies. It is so disgusting that we would have a Venezuelan career criminal introduce one of our presidential candidates. And then Tim Kaine doing an entire rally in Spanish. Our language is English. If I go to Mexico, I want to be surrounded by Spanish speakers. If I go to Italy, I want to be surrounded by Italian. You want to get absorbed into that culture. And if you're in America, you need to speak English. It's not a xenophobic thing, but you know what? That's one label I don't mind having because when I'm out in public, I don't want to be surrounded by Spanish speaking or any other language being spoken. The, the biggest thing of all, actually they're equal, it's a comfortability issue and it's a safety issue, okay? Because... I want to feel comfortable in America. I want to feel like, like it's not a stranger's land to me. I want to feel like I can recognize it. And, and how do you feel that it's, that, how can you feel comfortable when you can't even understand what's being spoken around you, right? It feels like a foreign land. It's, it, it's like, do I really have to explain that, that, that natural instinct to want to understand what's being said around you? It's your home. You're not on vacation and you can't understand what's being said around you and the safety issue. What if the bunch of Spanish speakers or Chinese speakers or any language speakers are saying, you grab his hands, I'll grab his feet, you knock him out and steal his wallet. I mean, it's just common sense. The same reasons why there should be no Muslim covering their face on their driver's license or walking into a bank. This is just common sense. It's just common sense that we need borders that we need a wall, it's a symbolic gesture, not have amnesty for 11 million people that broke the law. How are we encouraging that? 
to a, then send a signal to Latin American countries to send more and more and more of them because we're going to give you amnesty so you could come in and sneak in and hide for a while and you'll get amnesty too. We still don't have a wall, so just come on in and we're going to allow a million Syrian refugees in here. Half a million, it'll go to more and more and more. The more violence that happens overseas, we're going to let more and more and more in. No, it's disgusting. Hillary Clinton's policies of open borders is sickening and sad. It's pathetic. 2% will grow up to be radicalized terrorists. So that's, that'll be, I don't know, 100, 500 terrorist attacks in America over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Thousands of Americans killed. Just, just so unnecessary to even take on that risk. Why? We have 330 million people in this country. This isn't the 1800s anymore. Don't say that my ancestors immigrated here so that all of you future immigration families should come here too, okay? No, the migration needs to end. It's over. Like we've, we've maxed out our country. We don't need any more diversity. The diversity is fine. English should be spoken. We should have a wall. We should deport anyone who broke the law. Why are we going to say, oh, well, uh, they meant, they meant well, their intent was good. They just wanted to come here to work and feed their family or they were running for violence. How is that any different from a bank robber going in and robbing banks without a gun? just to afford his mother's cancer treatment, sort of put food on the table for his kids. What's the difference from these liquor stores getting robbed to feed their kids? There's no difference. A criminal is a criminal. Breaking the law is breaking the law, and it can't be tolerated. It's unreal that, that there's even a, a debate here about these two candidates. There's only one candidate speaking the truth, speaking common sense, and that's Donald Trump. But like I said, there's been some bad luck over the last couple of days with no terrorist attack happening, and that's just the facts. We needed one more terrorist attack to strike fear into all these delusional, distracted PC robots that are like, oh my god, he touched someone inappropriately. We're not even talking about a rape victim. We're just talking about like 10 paid actors from, from Hillary saying that Trump hugged them inappropriately or kissed them inappropriately. <laughs> After flirting and striking up conversations and getting the signals already, it's just pathetic. It's sickening. Oh, that 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 you all think that uh, how is that going to affect you? Like we don't need a role model in the White House. We need someone to save our country. Play hard. Need to freaking put their fist down and make better trade deals. Make a friendship with Putin and Russia and even Kim Jong Un of North Korea if possible. Freaking be talking about someone's personal sex life like that's gonna get you a job or save this country is disgusting and pathetic and uh, I think that's all the points I wanted to hit on so it's election day uh, they're saying 70% white have voted 10 to 12 percent Latino and 11 12 13 percent African American they're saying it's basically the same numbers as four years ago White percent might be down two or three percent. So, anyways, standing by for the first polls to close. And we'll do a video on all of that coming up. I started breaking everything down, but forgot that I had printed something out that I wanted to uh, put on blast about Ariana Huffington and her Huffington Post disgrace of a publication. Where's the magazine that matters? Okay, so see, this is what the media thought was gonna happen. Now, one of these people would be facing off against Hillary Clinton today for the presidency, but of course it's Trump. So the media just can't stand being so wrong. And then all before the primaries, they said Trump would never be the nominee. And Huffington Post especially wouldn't even put Trump in the news section because they said he's just entertainment. Look, I even took my watch off because I thought this production was done. They put him in the entertainment section because they said they wouldn't even give him the attention or the time of day to even legitimize his fake campaign and then he became the nominee and then of course under lots of pressure to you know not look so idiotic they finally caved and put him in the news section 
But when they did that, now for the past, literally, like ever since he became the nominee this summer, they have this editor's note at the bottom of every single biased bullshit piece of article about Trump. At the end of every article, it says, editor's note, Donald Trump regularly incites political violence and is a serial liar, rampant xenophobe, racist, misogynist, and birther who has repeatedly pledged to ban all Muslims, 1.6 billion members of an entire religion, from entering the U.S. That's what they put at the bottom of every article. So while they, while they conceded and finally started putting Trump in the news after a year of them being completely and utterly wrong, then they put this editor's note at the bottom of hundreds or thousands of articles that they've written to try to derail him for the past since he became the nominee in uh, July. So let me just tell you, the media is so for Hillary Clinton, like Trump says, it is a rigged system, folks. It's a rigged system on multiple levels. That electoral college that I was just talking about and just the amount of bias that you end every single article with that kind of nonsense. That, that's just like, wow, you're not even trying to report uh, factually. Like that is not fact right here. To say he's a xenophobe, racist, misogynist, and birther, serial liar, like incites he incites political violence right i was attacked by hillary clinton's criminal paid thugs that get fifteen hundred dollars in an iphone for every time they go and protest trump's rallies <sighs> just unreal like you isn't it so it's so transparent to see the the, the, the disgusting bias and pc suppression from the mass media including the huffington post and you want to see why she just hates Trump even more than she already does and would have anyways? Look at this. Trump wrote that in 2012, man. And that must have pissed her off so much. And, and she finally tried to get her revenge this, the past 18 months against Trump. First not putting him in the news section. And now having that editor's note at the bottom of every single Trump article. Just, I mean, how, how irresponsible, how sad and disgusting to do that. To try to just sway every single voter away from Trump, not even pretend to be impartial, not even like doesn't that that just automatically makes you look like your your articles can't be believed, they can't be taken for face value when you when you end it with that every single time. Ariana Huffington, Alicia Machado, like after ISIS, I think I hate Alicia Machado the second most. In, in my entire life. Like, I'd probably give away half of my fortune. Like, if, if the devil could come to me, I would sell my soul to the devil for Alicia Machado to suffer a slow, agonizing death. I would give away uh, 20,000. No, I can't, I'm not going to say that. that. I guess that would be construed as a threat. But yeah, I mean, like, I... Like the way I fantasize about just being able to spit on all those protesters that are rioting the streets, turning the city into a freaking third world country. The way I fantasize about writing that I wish I could spit on them, just fantasy of course, because I wasn't trying to get murdered. Uh, the same thing, I wish, wish that Alicia Machado would suffer a slow agonizing death. It's just so, it's, she is such a piece of, just what a worthless human being and trying to influence our election. She, you are not an American and you just suddenly become a fake American because Hillary Clinton's pulled some corrupt strings for you and now you're trying to influence our election. Shame on you. You're a disgrace and just know that about 110, 130, 150 million Americans hate you because you are not American and you were trying to with our election so it's such a disgrace what this what this presidential campaign this candidacy this it comes down to Tim Kaine speaking Spanish Alicia Machado a career criminal introducing Hillary Clinton and Jay Z and Beyonce and Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen and Rolling Stones and Gaga and Katy Perry all doing concerts for Hillary to try to convince the millennials that she's so cool that she should be voted in as the president to save our country from terrorists and open borders and a loss of jobs. Sickening. All you liberal Democrats, you're pathetic robot pieces of shit disgraces.
I just gotta add about Tim Kaine speaking in Spanish. What kind of signal does that send to anybody coming into this country, legal or illegally, about assimilating, about standing for the national anthem, about adapting our language? It's just so sad and sickening that that is being paraded around, that Alicia Machado, a career criminal, is being paraded around from Venezuela with her fake citizenship now and her still super broken English. You know, no, no, too. never, 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 never uh, prior than that, the universe value. That's not never, English. Well, this is from, this is from any problem this is, before this is, before in the universe. Well, this that's is not English. Is it, sorry. That, that lady is... Can be a no one can relate too. to you. No Why one's not? sympathetic Listen, to you. I thank you for your time Freak and I congratulate you queen. on your American citizenship. All the best. Nah, you. you're thank you fake much. American. I'm really proud of that. You're fake. And, well, you're not you know, a citizen. We need to change minds and <laughs> to respect for all the women. All the women's. Okay. That's not like. Look, if you come here and you got broken English for a year, two years, all right, cut you some slack. You're trying. You're learning. But Alicia Machado, she's had like the like the visa, work visa for her for her superficial modeling her whole life and stuff. So she's been here in and out of here, going back to Venezuela, doing her probably drug smuggling, associating with her drug dealer cartels with her kids. And now she still can't even speak like even decent, reasonable English. It's so, so sad. Like, look look at the clip with her and, uh, and Anderson Cooper. Like, look what she's admitting to. Like, there, there are uh, reports that Trump surrogates uh, tonight have been referencing and pointing to on CNN and elsewhere about an incident in 1998 in Venezuela where you were accused of driving a getaway car from a murder scene. You were never charged with this. The judge in the case also said you'd threatened to kill him after he indicted your boyfriend for the attempted murder. I just want to give you a chance to address these reports that the Trump surrogates are talking about. He can say whatever he wants to say. I don't care. You know, I have my past. Of course, everybody has. Everybody has a past. And I'm not uh, a thing. Like, she just thinks it's nothing. Like, I'm a felon for one felony back in high school 15 years ago for running a gambling website and making people a lot of money. She is a career criminal, whether she got prosecuted or not. It's beside the point because Venezuela is such a corrupt country and paid off by her drug-dealing cartel members. But she's involved in murder. She's involved in threatening the judge's life. She's involved with drug cartels, and yet she's allowed to come in this country. It's sickening. Tim Kaine, you should be ashamed of yourself. Speaking Spanish, <laughs> it's just so sad. Like you, that is not showing loyalty to America. That is not showing pride for America. And that is telling everyone in coming into this country that, that is needing to speak English that, hey, you know what, hey, I'll just do a rally for you in your language anyways. It doesn't matter. It's sad. It's pathetic.